On today's show, it's all about winter getaways. Whether you're a snowbird or prefer the blue waters of the ocean, the season of winter means different strokes for different folks. Beautiful. Come on, baby. All right. <laughs> Next, these Minnesota artists don't let the ice and cold keep them from their creative process. What's their vision? Let's just say it's very Minnesota. Great winter comfort food. And Laura Shera is going wild in the kitchen, this time cooking up a recipe that's sure to warm your winter nights. That is so good. Our Minnesota Bond Classic takes a look back at an all-time favorite. It's called The Dancing Squirrel. Those stories and more, next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. <laughs> Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show and as you can see we are inside today. That's because the outside is mighty cold here in Minnesota. Which brings up our first story about winter getaways. Now most of the time we think of getaways as going south but you know there are such things as winter getaways in Minnesota. Would that be a getaway? When the snow flies and temperatures sink, Minnesotans are famous for leaving the state they love. If only for a little while. Short-term snowbirds, so to speak. To catch some rays, warm rays. Or play tourists somewhere. Or go fishing in water that never freezes. Yeah, beautiful. Come on, baby. All right. <laughs> oh, what do we got here? <laughs> but, but wait. A winter getaway in Minnesota can be more than one way south. Maybe it's nothing more than the solitude of an ice shack. Maybe it's a new experience. How about a dog-powered sled ride into the Boundary Waters wilderness beyond Ely? Oh, nice one. Maybe catch a lake trout while your canine helpers take a nap. Maybe it's a winter trout stream in scenic southeast Minnesota. Trout love cold water. How about a getaway in a Minnesota state park? Winter amenities may be fewer than summer, but they're there. Okay, forget it. Your getaway requires cactus. Is that it? Consider sunny Mazatlan, Mexico and troll the blue water for blackfin tuna. Or, take me to them, cast fresh water for a largemouth bass. Boy, it's pretty looking bass, very pretty. Another popular Mexican hangout for Minnesotans is here, Cabo San Lucas. You can't beat the beach scene, and not far away, swim striped marlin, an angler's dream fit. Get me a marlin. Oh, he's a beauty. And it's almost free, senor. Closer to home, a winter getaway that pleases can be found in the Florida Keys, where I once fished with the late Jose Wahebe. At the end of the Mississippi River, there's the Louisiana Bayou, rich with fish despite oil spills and hurricanes. Maybe it's a January quail hunt in Georgia that means for you a break from winter. Good shot. Escape if you must. <laughs> Just don't forget, come back to marvelous Minnesota. Oh yeah, oh that's a nice one. Remember, the walleyes bite again, come May. Coming up, 
an art project that can't get any more, shall we say, Minnesotan. Let's go to 13. Oh, at 13, huh? Yeah. Sometimes weird things happen at 13. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers. Rapala Ice Force, Border View Lodge, and by Star Bank. Welcome back. You know, lots of Minnesotans go on the ice every winter to go ice fishing in their shacks. Who would have ever thought that a shack could also be a work of art? Well, it can be. And we found the story. Winter in Minnesota. A love affair. Wind chills and snow banks. Are you serious? Ice fishing, understandable. Snowmobiling and skiing, okay. But this. How do you explain this? This art show of sorts. This collection of shanties on the frozen tundra of White Bear Lake. We have this whole saying for the art shanty project that art shanty donors walk on water and people forget and they look down and they're like, oh my God, yes, that's right, I'm on top of a frozen lake. It's exciting and I think we do change a lot of people's mind about winter can be fun. Fun for sure, a little crazy too. But it's an actual event planned by area artists. We have the Curling Shanty, which is an architecture firm that designed that gorgeous shanty. That's probably one of the most beautiful ones I've ever seen. They're actually teaching people about curling. You know, throwing that stone across the ice. This is the music box shanty. Well, right now we've got the Roll Family Singers in their playing, which is great. player, a washboard player, and they got a gal who does a little clogging, which is perfect for our shanty because our shanty is full of a whole bunch of junk instruments that we built. Wine bottle marimbas, gas can guitars, pipe organ made out of PVC pipe, and a whole bunch of tissue paper comb kazoo. Regular hoot nanny. Sure is. And if you want to jig in your mucklucks. And then way over there, that's probably the most popular one is the dance shanty. Is there an amazing shanty? The elevator shanty, that is amazing. What floor, please? Let's go to 13. Yeah. Sometimes weird things happen at 13. I, I like the music. You can go into the basement and it can open up and see fish. You can go up into space sometimes. Sometimes it just takes you to a party floor. Sometimes it's haunted. Oh no! no. Not this again! Why is it on fire? It kind of depends on the floor you pick and um, the elevator's mood. There's a secret door here that most people don't ever see. And here is the control room. And we have someone who operates a computer who controls where you go. And we have someone who operates the doors. For every ride, there's at least a couple people back here. So now you know what all Minnesotans know. To survive winter, just grin and bear it. We hope to bring it everywhere that the ice is frozen.
Hey there, I'm Bill Shirk, the man about the woods. You know, getting around during the winter months through snow and ice, we all know that can be kind of tough at times. But I've got a little invention here that's kind of fun and it's pretty useful too. Let me show it to you. It's called a polk sled. You know, polk is actually a Finnish word for polka and it means a toboggan used for sports and hauling stuff. You can actually make one of your own with just a few bucks. I use an otter sled because otter is a partner of ours. And all you do is drill some holes around it, thread some line through so you can hook your bungee cords to it. That's also what you use to fold the sled. And then the fun part are these poles right here. I use PVC with a little rope through them. All you do is attach them to the front corners and you go for a walk. Click to the sled, click to my butt pack, and then you just go. Polks are awesome because these poles keep the sled from sliding into you when you're going down a hill. What's really cool about these things is they'll take a lot of weight. For ice fishing, I can put 80 pounds of gear in them, no sweat through the deep snow. We'll even use them for winter camping. Heck, we go into the boundary waters and we'll haul 100 pounds of gear a guy and pull these things four miles. Piece of cake, they're nice and easy, even in the deep snow. I'll even put my son in sometimes and we'll go for walks in the snow at night. Polk sleds, really cool little winter invention. Try one, you might just like them. We're just gonna season with some salt and pepper. It's the perfect recipe for those cold winter nights. Don't miss Wild in the Kitchen, next. Closed captioning from Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Lake of the Woods Tourism. Come fish the famous waters on Minnesota's Lake of the Woods, the walleye capital of the world. Choose from over 50 full service resorts with options for charter fishing, guide service, and full meal plans, or plan a trip and relax in the vast wilderness scenery. From the Northwest Angle to the South Shore, Rainy River and Bonnet. The Midwest's number one fishing destination offers four seasons of world-class fishing. Minnesota's Lake of the Woods, best fish in anywhere. Call 1-800-382-FISH or log on to lakeofthewoodsmn.com. Okay, it's time to go wild in the kitchen. Today on the menu is venison. Now, I know some of you are saying, oh, venison, I don't like venison. Hey, wait a minute. You haven't tried this venison. It's time to get wild in the kitchen. I'm here with Chef Jim Kinberg from Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Bar. And Chef Jim, last month we were cooking with whiskey, and this month we are cooking with red wine. I have to say I like where this is going. So we're making venison tenderloin. Tell me some of the ingredients that are in this recipe. We've got some great winter-inspired ingredients. Uh, so we're going to be accenting with a little roasted red vegetables. We're going to be doing a sauce with the roasted grapes, cooked down with a little red wine reduction, a little beef stock in there. So great winter comfort food. All right, so how do we get started? We're gonna get started. Notice there's just a little bit of silver skin on there. I wanna trim that off because that's gonna be a little chewy. We're just gonna season with some salt and pepper. pepper. All right, we wanna get a nice sear on there. Some good extra virgin olive oil. And you wanna hear that nice sizzle. It's gonna be about three minutes on each side. It's about three turns. I'm gonna give this a little peek and look at that nice crust we got going on there. Don't worry about that, that's all right. I've got just like one little garlic clove in there. Got some fresh thyme, got some fresh rosemary. This is just gonna kinda season the oil that it's searing in. And then what we're gonna do is kinda take that oil and just baste it. So look at that, we got another crust on the other side. Next step, so these are just some nice red grapes we got. Put them right in the pan. So now we're gonna put it in the oven, 400 degrees, and we wanna cook it to an internal temperature, 130 degrees. About medium rare, 130 degrees. One of the most important steps beyond the searing is the resting. And that's also gonna give us just enough time to make our sauce. So we're gonna take those herbs, we're just gonna remove them from the pan. You've got all that flavor kind of baked down to the bottom of that. And if you'd be so kind, why don't you pour like about a third of a cup, so maybe half of that. And then we're gonna do the same with the beef stock. Get all those flavors released from the bottom of the pan and then we're gonna let that reduce. 
So if you notice, it's cooked down to like a syrup consistency. Mm -hmm. So for plate up, I've got some of these great little roasted root vegetables. There's some parsnips. We're just gonna make like three nice little piles. Then we're gonna take our tenderloin. Let's see how we did. So here's the real test. Wow, look at that. We got that nice medium rare interior. <laughs> All right, and then we got the roasted grapes. We're just gonna kind of pull right around those medallions. A little fresh Italian parsley on there. And look at that. Give that a try. Okay. There we go. That is so good. Once again, Jim, you have outdone yourself. This is absolutely delicious. So there you have it. Instead of drinking all your red wine, you may just try cooking with it. It's so easy, yet so wildly delicious. On the coldest days in winter, it is so important to take care of the fish. And what I mean by that is you just battled the fish, you pulled it out of the water, and if you're not going to keep it, you've got to get it back down the hole right away. If it's cold out, it'll freeze its eyelids, and that fish is as good as dead once you let it go. It might swim away, but it's not going to swim away healthy. You might have 10 or 15 seconds when it's zero or below. So what I like to do is have my hookouts always handy right here. I literally just clip them right there. I catch the fish, I unhook it right back down the water. If you're gonna take a picture, you do it really quick. You get them back in and you save that fish for someone to catch another day. Coming up, our Minnesota Bound Classic deals with a pesky critter that we all see in our backyards and bird feeders. What to do about it? Just dance, I guess. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Connecticut. Tracker Boats. And by Totem Resorts. Time now for our Minnesota Bond Classic, and this one is about the annual winter war between bird feeders and squirrels. You know what I'm talking about. Well, here's an idea where you can say, call a truce with the squirrels and smile about it as well. Backyard squirrels. Nice to have around, I suppose, if only the dang things weren't so fond of expensive bird seeds or so skilled at wrecking bird feeders. We try to foil these bird seed thieves, but usually to no avail. Not so with Scott Schultz. He decided to, well, get even. I thought, well, I can't get rid of all the squirrels, so I figured I'd come up with a feeder and my criteria was I wanted them to work for the food. <laughs> Scott's working squirrel idea turned into squirrel fun. Somewhere, I don't know where, the, the idea of making them bungee jump. Behold the squungy. Started out with just a piece of elastic and uh, they chewed it and spilled the corn and it progressed to the metal spring and the chain and cable and that's how it got started. This is nuts, said the squirrels. That seemed to work. It, it gave them something to eat and kept them away from the bird feeders for the most part. It turned out to be very funny to watch. To prove it, Scott has videoed their antics. They're spinning, they're swinging, twirling, they do everything. They, they hang upside down, the squungy holds two ears of corn, and they sometimes hold onto one and feed off the other, or they'll, they'll hang upside down and straddle the two corn. If you're gonna feed them anyway, you might as well get, you know, get some enjoyment out of watching them eat. In the end, the squirrels win. They get the food, we pay for the fun. It's a nutty deal, but hey, with squirrels, what do you expect? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you have to admit it's funny, but I have to share this with you. I have one hanging in my backyard with a nice cob of corn on it, and for some reason, no matter, the squirrels won't touch it where it's at. So I have some strange squirrels in my backyard. That about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sharon, of course, always the star of the show. Is Raven? Yes, it is. You always the star. Yes. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call one eight hundred eight nine nine seventy four thirty three. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com. Share your stories on the Minnesota Bound Facebook page under the Share Your Story tab.